All right, so here we go. Completing the square, 4.7. This is the first half. So this is the first way, there are two ways we use completing the square. So um, you will need this later this year. Oh, later this year, okay? You also will need this next year. Okay? You also will need this next year. So, um, let's just let's just kind of talk about some stuff first. Um, so, x plus 3 quantity squared equals 16. Okay? Tell me, how would you solve this? Square root you saw this. Yeah, y'all, listen to me. First of all, some of you don't know how to square a binomial. Some of you square this and you get x squared plus 9. Is that right? No, people, no. It's x squared plus 6x plus 9, okay? So, no, it is not. So, yes, I like the square root. So, we're going to square root both sides, right? So, this square root takes care of that squared. And I'm left with x plus 3 is equal to what? Four. Plus or minus 4. Plus or minus 4. Plus or minus 4. If you didn't put that, then you lost half your credit. All right, now what do I do? And where does that minus 3 go? In the front. Yeah, y'all quit putting that in the back. So negative 3 plus or minus 4. If you leave it like this, I took half credit away. Because that says... You don't know what negative 3 plus 4 is. Y'all, that is negative 3 plus 4. What is negative 3 plus 4? 1. 1. What if, they, what if it's like that, but it has like square roots in it? Then you can't. You have to leave it apart. Okay? So this is 1. And then this is negative 3 minus 4. What is that? Uh, yeah. So there's my answer right there. Okay? Oh, put a new top dogs list over there on the cabinet. So congrats to all you kiddos that made that. Good job. Good job. Good job. It's always nice to look up there when you see your name. All right. Yeah, you're up there, Dad. Yeah. My goal is. My goal. All right. So here we go. Example one. Example one. Some of y'all, that was your goal. So wow. There you go. That's the now. All right. So. What about this one? What about this one? Okay, so here's the problem. It looks like this. X squared minus 8X plus 16 equals 25. Could I take a problem? Y'all, this is just like the very first problems on your worksheet. Okay? This is just like the very first problems on your worksheet. You can make these difficult or you can make them easy. Have I set this up to be really pretty? What is this right here? That's exactly right. Y'all, this is a perfect square trinomial. Have you supposedly been trained to recognize these? Yes. The first term, is it a perfect square? Yes. Of what? <coughs> what about this last term? He's plus a perfect square of 4. Is this middle term twice their product? Yes. yes. So he factors into square root of the first. Keep this first sign. The last sign should always be a plus, guys. Okay, we're going to learn why today, but um, it should be. So this, always keep the first sign, and square root of the last, quantity squared. Okay, now what's the easiest way to work this problem? Square root. Y'all, that's so fast and easy. All right, so this goes away. X minus 4 is equal to what? Uh, plus, plus or minus, minus five. 5. You should be working ahead of me, right? Because that's how you know if you really know what's going on. <coughs> Not just copying my work. So plus 4 and plus 4. X is equal to 4 plus or minus 5. What is 4 plus 5? What's 4 minus 5? Perfect. And there's my answer. Okay? So, here's the first skill that we have to learn. We are going to try 
No, we're not going to try. We are going to make perfect square trinomials. Because if you can't make these, okay, then you can't complete the square. All right? So here we go. Now we're not going to just shout the answer out until I ask for it because some kids will catch on to this really quick and some kids may not catch on and we'll tell you how to do it. Okay? But I really, you learn better when you like catch on and make your own step up. And it's right. So x squared plus 6x plus what? What number? Don't say it out loud. What number could I put in the blank in order to make this a perfect square trinomial? What do y'all say? Nine. It's nine. Yeah, okay, it is nine. All right? So some of you are like, wow, I don't know how they did that. That's okay. It's okay because we're going to do a few of them. All right? But obviously I'm using, y'all listen to me. If I went up to a third grader and I said, hey, honey, how, how many numbers are in this right here, this line? What would they say? Two, right? They're not going to look at that and say, oh, there's a one in front of that x squared. They're going to say there's two numbers. Y'all are looking for the relationship between these two numbers. That's what you're doing. You're using this number. You've got to figure out how to get this one. All right, here's the next one. x squared plus 10x plus, don't say it out loud, x squared plus 10x plus what? 25. 25. Very yes, good. Sir. 25. How are they using this number to make this number? Don't tell yet. X squared plus 16X plus blank. Don't say it. Okay, what'd you get? Okay, so tell me what you're doing. For those of us who don't haven't figured it out, what are y'all doing? Okay, you're taking the binomial, dividing it by half, and then timesing that. Okay, so I'm taking this middle number, I'm halving it, right? So how do you have something? Divide by two or multiply by half. So when are those useful? Well, if it divides into it evenly, then I'm dividing by two. But what if it were a seven? No decimals and no mixed numbers. So then I would multiply by half. That's seven halves. When you square seven halves, what do you get? 49 over two. 49 over four. 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 Square the top four. and square the bottom. Okay? Y'all, that's what's going to happen to you some. All right? I mean, we're not going to start off with the difficult ones, but should you be able to work with fractions? Do the rules change just because you got a fraction? No. No. The rules are the same. All right, so here's the last one. Now everybody knows how to do it, so everybody ought to be popping on this one. So x squared plus 20x plus, what do you say? 100. 100. Half of 20 is 10, and 10 squared is 100. So you're taking half of this number, squaring it, and putting it right here. Does that tell you why this is a plus sign? Yes. Why? Because it has to be the same because you're adding the 10 to 10 to get your 20x. No, but no. That's exactly right. Because when I square something, it's always positive, right? I don't care. Look, just because this is, y'all, I can make that a minus sign if I wanted to. Okay? I could do, and, and when you take half of negative 20, what do you get? Negative, negative 10. 10. But negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. Okay? So that's why that's a plus sign. So if I have ax squared plus bx plus plus C. Okay? Tell me how to complete the square. What's the first thing I do? Square or no, half. half okay, half. so I'm going to take half of what? B. B. Half of B. Now, I could do that two ways. Do you agree? I could divide by two or I can multiply by one half. Those are the two ways of taking half of something. Is everybody with me? All right, then what am I going to do with it? Square it. Okay? And then what am I going to do with it? Always what? Add it. Always add it. Now,
Now, do you always add it because that's what the rules say? No. no. Why do you always add it? Because you squared it, y'all. And when you square something, it's always going to be positive. All right. Everybody okay so far? All right. You got all that? Can I change the page? Okay. No? All right. So here's what we're fixing to do. We're going to write down the rules for um, completing solve. We kind of learned how to complete the square. Y'all, that was how you complete the square. Okay? So um, we're going to learn how to solve an equation by completing the square. Okay? Solve by completing the square. Some of this is going to sound very familiar, all right? And then some of it you're going to be like, what? Number one, you might be like, what? All right, because we haven't talked about this, and we won't until the very last problem that we work. Okay? So, first of all, the coefficient of the quadratic. What am I talking about? Yeah, the number in front of x squared. The coefficient of the x squared. Coefficient of the quadratic must be 1. If it's not 1, you can't complete the square. You're going to have to fix it. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay? Number 2. You're going to put the constant. What's a constant? What's a constant? Yeah, just a plain number. It doesn't have a variable on it. Okay? So it's just a plain number. You're going to put the constant on the other side. Okay? You're going to put the constant on the other side. The third thing you're going to do is you're going to take half of V. You're going to square it. And you're going to add it to both sides. Um, you can't take an equation, right, and just add something to one side, can you? You have to add it to both sides in order to keep it equal and the same. Is everybody okay? Mm -hmm. All right. The fourth thing you're going to do is you're going to rewrite. I'm just going to call it the left-hand side for not getting too wordy. The left as um, x plus or minus something squared. Or you could call it a quantity squared. That's what I'll call it. A quantity squared. Okay? Because that's what that is. It's a binomial squared. Quantity squared. Number five, you're going to take the square root of both sides. What do I need to remember when I take the square root? Plus yeah. The plus or minus, that's what we keep forgetting, so we've got to make sure we get that in there. And then number six, we're going to solve for x. All right, anybody got a question? Okay, so these are the rules for completing the square. It's, it looks like it's going to be really involved, but it's not going to be so bad. All right, so let's try a problem. This is example three. It looks like this, x squared minus... 12x plus 4 equals 0. Okay? So the first thing that I want to think about is rule number 1. Is the coefficient of the quadratic 1? Yes. yes. So, all right, check. I'm off to number 2. All right? Number 2 says put the constant on the other side. Who's the constant? 4. 4. And y'all listen, when you put him over there, leave a blank right here because what am I fixing to make right here? Perfect square trinomial. Okay? And when you move 4 over here, what is it? Negative 4. Negative 4. Okay? So you're going to move the constant on the other side. You're going to leave a space over here because I'm fixing to create a perfect square trinomial. How? By following the rules in number 3. All right? So you just learned how to do it, right? What is half of 12? 6, six squared is? Yes. So plus 36 squared. Both sides. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Is everybody okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm through with number three, and I haven't even really done a lot. 
all right? So number four says rewrite the left as a quantity squared. So I want to take this perfect square trinomial and I want to write it as a quantity squared. Are you with me? So I'm going to open up the parentheses. What's the first term? X. X. What's the sign? Minus. Minus. It's going to be take this first sign, square root of the first, keep the sign, square root of the last, Six. quantity squared. Should you already know how to do that? Yeah. Y'all see us, we're using all that stuff that we've been learning, okay? Going to keep on doing it. What's negative 4 and 36? Now, have we learned how to solve problems like this? Yeah. All right, we're on it, people. Tell me what to do. So this square root takes care of that radical. I mean, that square, that radical takes care of the square. And I'm left with x minus 6 equals what? Plus or minus. What is a perfect square that's a factor of 32? 16. 16 times 2. Is this more difficult to do if you don't know your multiplication facts? Y'all, yeah. math is harder if you don't know how to multiply. If you don't know those multiplication facts and you got to stop and think about them, you're, it's just going to take you longer. <coughs> What's the square root of 16? 4. Since I took its square root, it goes uh, on the outside. And the 2 Now what do I do? Subtract. Or no, add the 6. Yeah, I add the 6. My brain just goes, hey man, just take it to the other side and change the sign. Where does he go? <laughs> Always in the front. So 6 plus or minus 4 square root of 2. Now, can I collect this? No. No. Y'all, this is my answer. Okay? This is my solution. 6 plus or minus 4 square root of 2. Okay? So, anybody know how I can check this guy? How? By adding it. Okay, I could plug it in, all right? So is it going to be kind of messy to plug in? Yeah, it's a little messy to plug in, all right? I want to show you another way to check, okay? Because this is going to show some understanding of what we're working towards, okay? So this is going to show some understanding of what you should be working towards. Um, so, no. All right, so what is the only thing in this equation I hate that layer right there, but if I don't put it on there, you can't see it. What's the only thing in this equation right here that you can replace with a Y? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to go to um, my little calculator. I'm going to go to Y equals, clear out whatever I got in there, okay? I'm going to put this equation. Y is zero, so then I'll have X squared minus 12X plus 4, okay? Now, you don't have to do this on your calculator. You can just watch up here. All right, um, I am specifically going to change my windows. I changed them from, I made it go out a little bit bigger, okay, from negative 15 to positive 15. Normally it just goes from 10, okay? So um, I'm going to look at my graph. It is a parabola. He opens up. It's just kind of a standard parabola, okay? So um, let's look at that x-intercept right there. Second and calculate. What's it going to be called? A zero. So I'm going to choose number two. He wants a left bound because there are two zeros actually on this graph. And so he's like, hey, lady, which one do you want? So I'm going to bound this guy right here. A left bound, when you read the card from left to right, a left bound is above it. My little spider's above it, so I'll press enter. He shoots an arrow. You can't hardly see it, but he shoots an arrow up there. And now he says, hey, give me a right bound. Where's a right bound going to be? Under. Yeah, it's going to be under it, below it. So I'm going to go uh, to the right. And it's going to take me down below it. I'll press enter. I don't really want to guess. You see, there's my arrows. He's finding the zero between those boundaries. Um, so there it is. Let's write it down. It is 0.34. Three, one, four, five, seven, five, and obviously he goes on. Remember this, when you have an x-intercept, your y should be zero. Could I possibly get a number in here for zero that looks like this? 3e negative 12. What is 3e negative 12? Zero. That is three times 10 to the negative 12. That is, listen to this, point 
zero 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 three. People, if you got that much money, guess what? You're broke. You're broke. Okay? If you got that much food, you're still hungry. All right? So that's zero. He just gets a little glitchy and like he got very, very close and he should win the prize. Okay? He's still zero. All right. Um, what about this other guy over here? Second and calculate a zero. I could go over here. Where's his left bound going to be? Below the x-axis. When you read that card from left to right over here, his left bound is going to be below that x-axis. There he is. So I'm going to set a left bound. Now he wants a right bound. So I go to the right. I'm up above it. Don't want to guess. So this one is 11 point, what, six, five, six, eight. I'm just going to do that. Okay? And it keeps going on. All right. So... Why? Why did I do that? What is that good for? What do these two numbers represent? That's exactly right. Y'all did that. Do these numbers right here. Yeah. Watch this. If I go, well, there they are right there. I've already done it. You see that? Look at that. If I said 6 plus 4 square root of 2, there's my 11 point six five six eight five four two five blah, blah, blah. Okay? He's an irrational number, so he doesn't stop. Um, here's my 6 minus 4 square root of 2. These are my x-intercepts, my zeros, my roots, my answers, my solutions. Okay? All right. Anybody got a question? Okay. So let's work another problem. You're going to do this one all by yourself. Are you ready? 3B. Solve by completing the square. Okay, solve by completing the square. So, um, x squared minus 10x plus 1 equals 0. Go. I'll give you about a couple of minutes to get started, okay, and then I'll start. Y'all listen to me. Don't you copy my work. You do your own work, and then you can look up later on and check it. Have your answer? Don't leave that. Don't leave that. Anybody got a question? No. Question? Okay, so when we put it into the calculator and we zero it, is that the same thing as just the plus minus, right? When you zero, when you zero, tell me what you're talking about. Oh, you're just doing on the calculator. How would I do that on the calculator? You have to do it two times, okay? If you did it on the calculator, do you see how I did this two times? Yes, no. I, I, here's, like on this one right here, here's what you would have to do. You would have to say five, plus 
um, two, root, two square root. Yeah, two square root of six. And then it would tell you what it was. Mm -hmm. And then I would cheat and go back up here and grab this problem and go back and make that a minus. But you could type it all in again if you wanted to. Okay? So that those are going to be. Now, these are the answers that I'm looking for, right? Mm -hmm. But if I were graphing them, these would be the answers that my calculator would get me if I asked it to calculate the zeros. Okay? All right. Anybody got a question? No. Nope. Everybody good? No. Okay. So, uh huh. So, the answer must be that equation right there or what the calculator gives the zeros for? No. This. The calculator, with, this is the answer that I'm looking for. Gotcha. It is the exact same thing as these two numbers, but these are not exact because they're rounded off because yeah. they're irrational numbers, gotcha. okay? But I could check it that way. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and work this next problem, and then, um, and then if I have time, I'm going to go show you something else. Okay, I'm going to work one that's a little bit more difficult for you. So let's try this problem first. This one's going to have something extra on it. Okay, so 2x squared plus 8x plus 14 equals 0. Okay, so if I were going to solve this by completing the square, do I have a problem? Yes. yes. Okay. So, y'all, you cannot complete the square when you have a coefficient other than 1 right here. It has to be, we don't want to divide, and I'm going to tell you why, okay? Because some teachers are going to teach you how to, to divide there, okay? But my, what I want to teach is, I want to teach you that this is a parabola, right? Mm -hmm. If you divide out that 2, will your parabola look different from my parabola? Yes, because this 2 makes it steeper. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm not going to teach you to divide that out, okay? Now, some teachers do, and that's okay, but then kids get messed up, and then when we learn the other thing, which is putting it in vertex form, what are kids going to do automatically? Divide. They're going to chunk that, and their parabola is not going to be right, okay? So I'm not going to teach you that way. All right, so um, I'm going to move this 14 over here first. You could do this step and the next step all in one. I'm okay with that, okay? So since I don't want to throw it away, but I do want to take it out, what's that called? What's the same thing as dividing? Factoring it out. Yeah, factoring it out is the same as dividing it, but I still leave it there. So now let's take the two out. Y'all listen to me, you only take him out of the x's. You don't take him out of the constant. You put him over there by himself. So what do you multiply two by to get two x squared? X squared, are y'all with me? What do you multiply two by to get eight x? Okay, now put this little, close this parentheses, leave you a space, okay? And now we're fixing to do something you're gonna think is crazy. Always. Y'all listen to me. I, I do nothing but work my tail off trying to find ways for you not to make careless mistakes. This is where a careless mistake will happen one third of the time, okay? And you can't afford it. Always draw the rainbow when you factor something out. And I'm going to show you why. You're going to see what happens. Okay, so as soon as I factor something out, my brain goes, oh, you better draw the rainbow, you better draw the rainbow. So I'm going to draw that rainbow right there. Okay, now when I just keep on going with what we know to do, you're going to see why it's going to be a careless mistake if you don't have that reminder. Now when I say draw the rainbow, I call it a rainbow not just because it's shaped like a rainbow, but I'm always going to make it a different color so it stands out. Y'all, I've done it with my pencil before, and it doesn't stand out, and I don't remember it, okay? I just ignore it. It's my pencil. It didn't stand out to me, okay? So I would use a different color pen. All right, so let's complete the square right here. I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial. What's half of four? Two, two squared is? Four. four. And you have to add it to both sides, right? So plus four. But here's the problem. Did you really add four right here? 
eight. Yeah, you really added eight. So while your brain will go plus four, plus four, no, you added eight over here because the distributive property says you have to multiply everything in there by two. So what do I have to add over here? Eight. Do you see where the careless mistake comes in? Yes. So the rainbow is there to jog your memory and say, did I really add four? Oh no, I added two times four. So you gotta multiply it. Okay, good job. All right, so now we're gonna write this quantity as a binomial square, quantity <coughs> square. See if you can do it. Don't drop your two. Don't drop your two. You should have gotten two times x plus two quantity squared. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. Over here, what is negative 14 and 8? Negative 6. Negative 6. Don't drop signs, guys. Okay, we're back to our homeland. Now You've done divide. this before. Huh? Now, now we divide. You cannot take a square root until what you have squared is all by itself. So now you divide. They go away. X plus 2 quantity squared is equal to, what's negative 6 divided by 2? Now what am I going to do? Square, square you ought to be working down, people. You ought to be working down. You're, you're right at home now. So square root, square root. X plus 2 is equal to plus or minus. Uh-oh. Is there a perfect square in 3? No. But what do you have to do? Really yeah, you got to take that I out, people. So it's I square root of 3. Okay? Oh my God. See, I'm telling you people, the stuff I'm teaching you, we're fixing to use. It's not for nothing. So I'm going to bring that little 2 over there. Negative 2 plus or minus I square root of 3. Okay, now I want to show you something really quick, and then I want to work another problem. And I'm glad I have enough time in this class. I didn't in the other one. Okay? So, watch this. Um, I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to put this in y equals. Okay? People, where, where is this number on the x-axis? Oh, that's going to be back on where, where are imaginary numbers on the x-axis? On the y. Y'all listen to me. This thing is graphing this on an x-axis and a y-axis. There is no imaginary in real. That's how you learned how to plot these numbers. So have you ever seen imaginary numbers on the x-axis? Watch what's going to happen. Watch what's going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to put this equation in. 2x squared plus 8x plus 14. I'm going to graph it. What did those imaginary solutions tell you? <laughs> the what? He, yeah, he's not going to touch the x-axis. That's all the imaginary that's all the amount. If you get imaginary solutions, will your parabola cross the x-axis? No. no. He will open up and be where? Below. Above it. Or he will open down and be below. below it. But if you have imaginary solutions, they're not located on the x-axis. These are all real numbers. Okay? That's pretty cool. All right. So let's work one more problem. All right? I'm going to do a nasty one. Oh, All right, no. so here we go. It's a bad problem. All right, ooh, he's so bad. I can check the bad. All right, so let's do a. Um, we're just gonna we're gonna do an easy bad one, okay? So let's do an x squared plus seven x um, minus four equals zero. Okay, you want me to give you a chance? Wait. Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes because I got about six, so I'll give you a couple of minutes. Go at least do something, people. Don't just stand there. Okay, do something. You can do some of it. Oh, I know. I mean, hopefully you can do that. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, no calculator. Stop. No calculators, people. We can do this. We're okay. All right, so you ready for me to help you? You were talking about this. Yeah, yeah, I was. Okay, but y'all listen to me. Is this the exact same skill? Are we changing the rules? No. Fractions are fifth and sixth grade skills. 
Should you be having problems? No. Okay, so here we go. Divide by two. No mixed numbers and no decimals. So obviously, y'all, these are the ones when it's a fraction, I write it down. Okay, I have found that in my old age, my brain does not remember things like it used to. Okay, so I write it down. <coughs> Seven halves. And then what am I supposed to do to that number? Square. Square it. Now watch, there's another reason why I'm writing it down. Okay, there's another reason why I'm writing it down. So when you square a fraction, what do you do? Square the top, square the bottom. Square everything that's in parentheses. What's seven square? What's two square? So what you do to one side? All right. Now watch this. Are you ready? I'm going to write it as a quantity square. Square root of the first. Keep the sign. Y'all, square root of the last. People, there it is. That's why I wrote it down. I don't even have to think about it anymore. It's uh, staring me in the face. Seven halves. Bam! Is equal to, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh Got to have a common denominator between one and four. What's it going to be? Four. So this, you multiply by four, so you multiply the top by four. Are you with me? What's four times four? Sixteen. What's sixteen plus forty-nine? Sixty-five? So, sixty-five fourths. Now, here's the magic, people. Watch this. This is so stinking cool. And it will happen every time. Square root of both sides. Anybody got a question? All right, watch what's going to happen. I'm going to square root and square root. These will go away. X plus 7 halves equals, what's the square root of 4? 2. Plus or minus. Let's don't forget our plus or minus. Come on. All right. Is there a perfect square that's a factor of 65? Uh, I think it's 5 and 15. Isn't that right? 5 and 15, and that's just... No, it's not 5 and 15, because that would be a 25 in there. Um, 5 and 13. Thank you, Timothy. 5 and 13. 13's prime. So that is simplified. He won't simplify any more than this. Now, let me tell you about the cool part. The cool part is when you do this, you will always, always have a common denominator. So why is that cool? Watch. People, guess what everybody's over? Two. Guess what? When this comes over here, what kind of sign does he have? And there's my answer. Mm -hmm. Boom. Oh, we have to write it like that? No, you could have written it like this. But I mean, they have the same denominator, so I could put them together. But either one's okay with me. I don't care. All right, so I'm going to pass out your worksheet. You're going to do, you can do the first page. If you don't do the whole thing, you do it how? Every other one. Not just, don't, you know, can't just say half because some people will be like, I work five. 